So to begin with, let's go ahead and start with shape creation. So let's try to make each of these different types of shapes. This is something I'm probably going to do a lot, especially every time that I have one that reaches the bottom. So I'm going to create a separate function for it. We call it create Tetris shape. And so I'm going to create these Tetris shapes just before the section with the base game for processing, but right after collision. So void create Tetris shape. So now I need to be actually create one. Let's begin with, I want to create a new shape, which is the variable I created up at the top. And I need it to be a random number between one and seven. So the way random works, if you put in a number eight, it will go all the way up to almost eight. Now technically that's a decimal, so that's why I need this int around it so that it changes it into an integer rather than being a real number with the full decimal. Hmm, I just realized that it's going to be hard to tell if I'm getting a shape right while this is going on. So I will need this eventually, but let's put in some debugging code for now, where I'm just going to directly say, hey, you're a straight piece. And we can change that later when we need to try each of the different shapes. I would like to have different colors for these blocks, for now, let me go ahead and just say make this equal to a particular color. Let's do red, I suppose. The way that the web colors work is that the first two letters represent the red value in hexadecimal. The next two are green and then blue, RGB, red, green, blue. You use this little hashtag at the front to make it recognize that that's a hexadecimal number, and that's a common way that colors are used on the websites. You can also directly put in the numbers themselves using the, some of the color functions, but I'm just going to start with that for now. So if, if shape equals straight, then I need to figure out where block one is going to be. It's going to be a new game object. I probably want this to be right about in the center. So it's probably going to be 20 over for the left wall, and then halfway would be about 100 in, I suppose. So the fifth column in. It's going to be up at the top, and then 19 and 19, just to make sure I don't have that pixel issue on the edge. We'll give it a shape color. red block up at the top. So block 2 is going to be a new game object. I'm going to make this vertical, so it's going to have the same starting x position, and it's just going to be 20 down from the top then. It's also going to be 19 by 19, and it's going to have the same shape color. Block 3 going to be 20 plus 100, and it's going to be at 40, and I think you can see the pattern at this point. And block 4 is going to be a new game object. 20 plus 100, 60, 19, 19. Two, three, four. There we go. Now, I would like to be able to give it some random colors here. In the original Tetris game, each of the blocks would often have a different color. And so I'm actually going to create a function called random color here. That's going to set this color to one of some preset ones that I'm going to define. So before we begin this, let's go ahead and take a look at what kinds of colors we might be, want to use. Web color. I like this one from W3School. I was speaking before about the different colors you can get. So here's our pure red, which is FF0000. 
I'm probably going to want to do some of the primary colors, so blue, which is two Fs at the end instead. I'll probably want green, which is two Fs in the middle. Maybe yellow, which is the first four or two Fs. Let's see, I think that orange is another one that typically is in these games. So FF99, and then purple. There's a variety of different choices here. Maybe we'll go with this one. So F's on either side, and then maybe cyan, which is basically light blue. Let's add another function just below here. Void. Actually, I don't want void. I'm actually going to return a color. That's the whole point of this. I'm going to pick a random number. And I believe that was seven different colors. So blue, red, green, yellow, orange, purple, cyan. Yes. So much like before, we're going to do a random number. It's not new. I'm not creating an object. I'm getting a number. So int random. And if I want 7, I have to do 1, 8, because it doesn't include the 8. So if random pick is a 1. Let's do going to return RGB, so zero, 0, for red, green, blue. So if random pick is 2, let's do green next, I suppose. Return RGB, 0 for red, full green, no blue. And actually, let's go ahead and test some of these things out real quick. I'm going to say, well, let's just set it right after this. We'll get rid of this line here in a sec. So we'll just say, after I pick a random number, I'll just set it to one, overwriting whatever the random number was, so we can see if blue works. There's blue. How about green? Good. Let's add in red. If it's a three, this will be red. This is the one that I did earlier, which is the two Fs at the beginning. All right. is four. Let's do yellow. And we're going to return FF, FF zero, zero. So that's a combination of red and green, strangely enough. At least in light it is. Let's do purple. So we're going to return FF00 FF for this one. It's kind of magenta y. It seems a bit much actually. Let's go down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. So just so you know, F is basically 15, C is basically 13, so I just made the color values a little bit less strong, so it's not quite the in-your-face magenta. If the random pick is 
six. Let's do cyan. Basically, a super light blue. This will be zeros in the beginning and Fs everywhere else. That's what it is. And finally, All right, so FF99. I should change the number so I can test that. All right, so we have our different shapes. <laughs> well, we have our different colors for our different shapes. Now when we choose it, purple, yellow, excellent, cyan. 